Greetings, Rebel Scum. Today we're going to be making a model from the Jedi Fallen Order game. This is Count Kestis. And I'll show you the painting process, I'll show you how I made him, and I'll show you which droids were involved in the creation of him. Now you must join the Patreon, you must subscribe to the channel, or you must like this video with your friends, or I'm going to come and get you. Uh, something like that anyway. Uh, see you later, or uh, where's he gone? Hey! All the files have been printed on my Saturn S and the resin I've used is mainly Sun Lu with just a little bit of any cubic grey thrown in as I had some left. But they've all come out really, really wonderfully. Four batches in total. I'll just show you the two batches here, the first and the second. But quality of all of them has come out amazing. Just getting them off the build plate each time, giving them a wash after the supports are off and then queuing them before moving on to the next stage which is the priming. And I'm using my regular air primer from Army Painter and I'm giving them all a layer of black. Moving on to the skin tones for Cal, I'm using Nomad Flesh for the base tone and I'm going over the black and I'm going to give it a really good base layer of this. If there's any black coming through, I'm just going to leave it in the under areas but I don't want too much of that black coming through, I want a good base layer of this on his face. And also on the only other part of flesh which is the hands holding the lightsaber. Once that's on, I'm moving to the mid-tone, the Barbarian Flesh, and as I always do, I'm just going to come from above down as if it's a light source, making the top half of his head lighter than the bottom half of his, ha his head. And again, same with the hands, I'm coming top down with those until I hit them with the highest colour of skin, which is the Wildling Flesh. Now here, I've angled his head, so I'm literally just going to see the top of his nose, his, above his eyes, and, and his sort of jawline, and I'm giving it a blast with that across. I don't want the bottom areas to see any of this lighter colour and the same with the hands right from the top down only. And once all that's done Rust-Oleum clear to seal all that hard work in and once that's dried completely you're ready for the next steps but make sure you get that Rust-Oleum on. Don't, not too much that it runs but enough to cover all your work and this is what it looks like now it's on. Some great detail in the work there from, uh, from the Wicked guys. Moving on to the clothing, and Amiga Blue is what I'm using for the base of his clothes. His clothes has got a real sort of darky blue colour, so this Amiga Blue over black, and I'm letting some of the black just come through to aid the shadowing effect, is giving a really good colour. Now I'm going to do a little bit of work on this and highlight it and put some washes in there, but from a base colour perspective, this Amiga Blue is really, really lovely and absolutely perfect for Cal. I've used some masking tape and some leather brown and I'm going to paint the leather parts of the upper part of the body. So I'm just using that leather brown to go all over it. I'm going to go across the whole thing. So that's the straps, the back plate, everything is going to get that base coat of brown to start with. And I'm going to use that Rust-Oleum Clear to seal all my hard work in to protect that paint for when I'm handling it, handling it in a little bit. Now to the boots, I'm going to use some raw hide brown over the black base coat to give them a colour. I'm going to leave some of the black shining through. I don't want to cover them completely, but I'm going to give them a leather look to start with. And some bullwhack brown, weird name, fabulous colour, just to go over some of the straps on the boots. I'm being really careful with my airbrush and I'm going to go over them in certain places just to make them look a little bit battered and aged and the same again on his sort of ammo pouches. 
Now we're going to move on to the painting stage and I'm going to use some grey and some white and these brushes that I always use that I highly recommend that you can get from the item description to paint the eyes. Now if you've watched my paint videos before you know I like to go a layer of black into the eyes first but today I'm doing it a little bit different. <laughs> it's not quite strictly true. I forgot to put the black in but I'm putting the white in and I'm going to show you how to get around the fact you don't need to put black in. So a little bit of grey and white mixed together and we're going to paint the uh, inner parts of the eye first of all a really narrow brush and those brushes I just showed you there's a really small brush and it's ideal for stuff like this it's a tiny tiny little thing that's great for the detail work Now normally obviously I do the black first as I said and you can see there that if I had done the black there would already be eyeliner in but there's not so we're going to have to do that later. Now I'm using some of this from the Fairy Flesh set and I'm going to go over his lips with this colour. This is not the only colour I'm going to put on because it's a little bit too contrasty but it's a very good base layer for the lips. And you can see what I mean, it just looks a little bit too pink. So I want to just darken it up a little bit. So I've took that base colour and I've added a tiny little bit of brown to it and I've just mixed it in and I'm going to go over it to give it a double layer. So you can see I've got a lighter outer layer and the inner layer is a ready browny pinky colour. It's, it's a really lovely lip colour and I'm using a really fine brush, that fine brush again with the lighter colour on there to draw some lines down to add some shadow effects. And that's the lips virtually done back to the eyes now and I'm going to use as we as we said before some matte black to put some eyeliner at the top of the eyes now again really really narrow brush just a little tiny bit on the end of the brush and drag it across the upper part of his eyeliner now if I'd have put that black layer in I may not have had to do this stage but hey ho it's not the end of the world and there we go you can see the shadow effect straight away the difference that it makes now obviously I'm putting a couple of layers of white in that's just not one layer but I didn't catch that on camera but now I'm going to use this red paint just some pure red and I'm going to water it right down into a wash and I'm going to paint it in two places under his eye as you can see there and I'm also just going to go into the very bottom of the eye so some of that red watered down paint pulls on the bottom eyelid and gives us that red sort of uh, veiny skinny look in the bottom of the eye that looks like there's blood in that section and I'm going to use more of that watered down red paint and I'm going to use a q-tip or a, an earbud depending on where you are to just wipe off the excess go over it a few layers until you get that red color under the eyes and that's what I'm aiming for now it's a little bit blurry so my apologies but you can see what I'm doing here. I'm just using black to put the irises in and I'm going to put some semi circles in, in exactly the same place in each eye just to make the background of the irises there. Take your time with this really small brush if you can get one and uh, follow make sure you do the same on each side. You might need to just touch them up a little bit but uh, there we go that they're done really using a bit of pink paint or a bit of red and white I'm just putting some corner bits into his eyes just to look for the veins and you can see that's just added a little bit more texture to the eyes. Now his eyes are blue so I'm going to start off with a base layer of ultramarine blue and again the really small brush and I'm just going to dob it in to the uh, black parts of the iris leaving a little bit of an outer edge of black so you, you cover most of it with blue just the edge is going to be black. And using some void shield blue which is a really really highlighted blue I'm going to do exactly the same thing with a narrow brush and I'm just going to paint it into the other dark blue at the bottom and I'm just going to draw it in in little lines to make another added effect to his eyes and that's the iris is done now for the pupils I'm taking a toothpick and I'm just going to load the end of the toothpick up and in one motion I'm just going to poke it into the center of his eye and that is it it is done that's the pupil in there as you can see there. Don't overdo the pupils, I'm just keeping them nice and small for Cal. And I'm going to do the same thing with a little bit of white paint just to give them a reflection. Now what I will do is add a bit of Vallejo uh, varnish into the eyes but this will just give them a, a little bit of a natural reflection look and that is pretty much the eyes done. Now using that watered down red paint I'm going to add some colour to his face. You've, you've seen people do washes and often face washes before but I'm just going to do it in certain areas this time. I'm going to paint it on and where it's pulled, where it's gathered a bit too much I'm going to take that q-tip, that earbud and I'm going to wipe it off and just leave a residue of the red on. Now this step you need to do over and over again until you're happy. Just 
do it in certain areas of the face, perhaps on his cheeks, on his forehead, on the chin and on his neck area, just to make some of that red stick out. Don't forget the ears as well. If it pulls, use, uh, use a bit of cotton wool or a sponge to just get it off and try to make sure there's no solid lines. We want to blend it all in. And that's how we're going to do the skin tones. Now that's not the only colour we're going to use on the skin, we're going to use a couple. Um, you've probably seen some skin washes with red and yellow and blue. And yes, you can do that by all means, but I like to exaggerate certain areas. So I'm going to use different colours on his face. And I'm going to take this brown from the um, Vallejo set and I'm going to just paint in some of his folds of his skin just to darken them up a little bit. Um, there in his nasal labial folds as an example and exactly the same process will be to just put it on and dab it off and I'm going to do the same between his eyes there on the little folds in his skin there and dab it off. Now you'll see what happens here it moves across to his head that's fine I'm happy with that so I'm just going to move it across all over the face and you can see he's just got another another layer in it's just a, your face is made of lots of different colours it's not just pink it's not just brown it's not just white so, but here obviously where the light's going to catch the nose I've taken that uh, fairy flesh set light colour and I'm going to start to paint in the areas where the light's going to really catch now so that's the outer layers of the body really If we think that the light source is coming down, it's going to hit the bits that stick out just above his brow. It's going to hit his nose, of course, and it's going to get the tops of his cheek. And you'll see me do the cheeks in a moment. And when I do the cheeks, you'll see the difference, really. But again, this is probably lots of smaller layers uh, of lighter layers until you're happy with the result. And again, smear it around so it all blends in nicely. And you can see the difference. It starts to get a little bit lighter. Now I'm going to pretty much call the skin tones done on Cal there. I've just made it a little bit more interesting. You could speckle some uh, brown across it or some freckles across him, but I'm happy with that. Now his hair is kind of a ginger colour, so I'm using orange and red for the base colour. This isn't the end colour of the hair by a long shot, but um, it is the start of the base layer. So I'm going to use that really fine brush again, just to make sure I get right to the edge of his hairline and I paint that orange in and all across the hair. Now, if you do like what you see today, make sure to subscribe to the channel. We do have a Patreon as well, and I'd really, really appreciate it if you take a look at that. It'd be great to have you on board. You can support the channel in a couple of ways. You can either subscribe, you can join the Patreon, which would really, really help me. It helps me make all these videos for you. If you want to buy any of the paints or anything you see, you can buy them from the item description. And as an Amazon affiliate, a little bit will kick back to the channel, but it doesn't cost you guys any more. But it just helps me, it really does, because anything that comes into the the, to the channel goes straight back into materials and paints to, to carry on doing what I really enjoy doing and I enjoy making videos for you guys. So there's the hair down, that's base layer as you can see it's a fairly standard colour with a couple of little hints in it but we'll do some more on that later. And don't forget the eyebrows of course. And we're going to get some red tone. This is an army painter wash and I'm going to cover the whole of the hair in this red tone just to give it a darker tone. The washes will sit into the background and make it look really, really um, red and orangey. And that's the colour I want for Cal. Small brush to just tidy up those little edges. <music> Now I'm going to put that to one side to dry and I'm taking some of this skin set here from the Fairy Flesh set and I'm using it on a small brush and I'm going to do some work on the leather now. We're going to start to age the leather up. So I'm using a little bit of a dry brush technique just initially across the straps. Now they're all the same colour, the straps are the same colour as the, as the main section of the body and I want them to look a little bit different. So I'm using this lighter colour to just go across all the straps to give them a dry brushed used battered worn look and the effect you get it's not hard this technique but it really makes a massive difference to your model just don't overload your brush just put a little bit on your brush and rub it lightly a few layers if you need to until you're happy and go over the edges that would naturally be battered by use this the edges the front ends of it the bits of the material that look a little bit scuffed and battered give them a little bit more of a wear and look and if you take the same again with the belt I'm going straight over the blue with the belt and I'm doing that for a reason I want the belt to be a different color to the rest of him so I'm just taking the same color and I'm sort of bit thicker this time dry brushing it right across the belt so it's all covered 
and I'm using some desert highlights but you can use any lighter colour um, a skeleton bone maybe to just go down the edge of the strapping there and again these little details really will make it stick out and they will separate it from the main body of the rest of the top of his body. And I'm going over the ammo pouches he's got on his back all around the edges of it just to make it look worn. Now he's got a kind of fur skin around the outside of the clothing so I'm using a skeleton bone colour just to go over that. We'll go over it with a wash later but that's to give it a base layer just to separate it apart from the rest of it. And there's a few sort of the smaller bits going in now. I'm, doing, I'm painting the rivets on the back of his jacket to silver and as you can see where it's really highlighted at the top there you can see that I've put some more work into it to make that jacket look absolutely battered and now the silver work is going on and there's a few little uh, colours in the uh, in the shackles there so I've painted those in again it's these little pieces that really add a little bit of colour into it and it really will stick out Right, the strong wash now, I'm going over the belt with the strong wash. If it pulls up in any places, I'm just going to keep rubbing it until I get rid of those balls. But I want this belt to look a bit tired and aged and battered, and I don't want it to look the same as the top. Again, silver around the edges of his belt just to add that uh, final effects in. Soft tone next, another one of the washes, and I'm going to go over the sheep skinny bits on his uniform with that just to darken them up, just to dirty them up a little bit. These washes are amazing. I'll put a link in the description where you can get them from. They're absolutely great, great to have. Now there's the leather as you can see and we're just going to put that wash on that light tone and look at the difference that's made straight away. It's really giving it that leathery effect. It's not hard to get these effects, it's just a process and once you know the process you are laughing and as you can see from following that today it looks really really good. I'm so so pleased with the way Cal's tops come out. I think the leather effect looks great, the sort of sheep skinny effect looks great. We'll do a bit more work on the blue but I'm really pleased with what I can see so far. And there's his belt as you can see I've painted the cantina at the back silver put a black lid on and I've painted the little uh, I think they're like little grenades or something on his belt and I'm just going to use a little bit of speed paint red just to go over those little bits there just to add that extra layer of detail to it and these little details just stick out in the end model it looks lovely Hardened leather is going to be the last colour we put on the hair and I wanted to darken it up especially on the inner parts of the hair. So I'm using this speed paint to go over the whole of the hair now, especially concentrating on the inner bits to add some shade and depth to the red. And once that's on, I'm going to call the hair done. These speed paints again, you, you know, they're not just things you can need to put over a zenithal shade, you can add them onto colour. They're brilliant, they've got so many uses and I love, love, love the speed paint. And I'm going to call the hair done. Um, I think you'll agree it's got lots of different colours in it. It's got lots of shades in it. It's not just one colour. And I'm, I'm really pleased with how that's come out. Now, Griffin Blue is what I'm going to use to highlight his uniform. And I'm going to use a dry brush technique with that. Um, get it on your dry brush. Get 90% of your paint off. Get a nice big makeup brush. And all I want to do is get some of the blue, some of the material and I want to highlight the edges of it so give it a real light coating all over and this dry brushing technique on the material it just makes it look amazing you can do the same when you're doing jeans and if you look at his trousers now where all his pockets are you can see that that highlighted blue just makes it stick out it really really exaggerates the uh, the nooks and crannies of the uniform and it makes it look aged and battered and that is exactly what we're after but I think you'll also agree it's not rocket science and it's certainly not hard to do and there we go all done it, I'm chuffed with it absolutely chuffed with how the weathering has come out on this model Boots, we're going to do a little bit more work on the boots. I'm just going to give them a dry brush with some uh, skeleton bone. I'm not going to overdo it on them. I'm just going to give some of the highlighted areas a coat just to give them that one last battered look. And that's the boots done. Again, they were not hard to do at all. The 
those little pouches on the back we're giving them a little bit of a, of a light wash just to get them a bit more color on there and they're done as well and again look at that the detail on them is lovely there but it's not hard to do it's just a bit time consuming and again it's knowing the process dry brushing the blue across the rest of his uniform now to make sure it all looks the same and the last thing is the onyx blue for his lightsaber and Cal Kestis is done. Hope you've enjoyed this. I'll show you the end results. We'll come back to putting a BD1 and a base on, an, on the following video, but have a look at the end results, see what you think. Mm -hmm.